So one phrase that I used to hear a lot back in the day that people don't really say that much anymore these days is global exclusive. And if you think about it, the term never really made that much sense in the first place because obviously anything that comes out on global, even if it's on global first, will eventually make its way over to the JP side of the game. So I definitely think that the term global first makes a lot more sense. But that being said, I've been doing a lot of thinking today and I've been talking to a few of my buddies. Shout out to I Bring the Luck as well as AC Gaming. And together, we've been able to come up with a list of seven truly global exclusive things that the JP side of the game will most likely never ever see. Probably. Now, there is a chance that we miss some stuff in between, so if you guys have any other ideas for units or mechanics or just other things that fall under this global exclusive criteria, make sure to let us know in the comments down below. All right, so with all that said, let's just jump right into this list. And at number one, we have something that I am 99% sure JP will never get, and that is the Pilaf's Trove. Now, I'll be honest with you guys, I'm not 100% sure why JP has never received this. I've heard it might be something to do with like laws, like Japanese gambling laws that prevent them from implementing something like this, but it could also be some other reason that I'm not aware of. Either way, Global has had this for a long time. JP has never gotten it. And if we're being honest here, they're not really missing out on much for the most part, right? Like most of these packs in here are absolute garbage. Definitely ripoffs, definitely must just stay away from for most players. Like these rank up packs are garbage. These uh, hidden potential packs are garbage. These awakening packs, trash. This beginner pack is actually not too bad. All right, so like this is maybe worth your money, not the worst deal. But yeah, most of this stuff is terrible. Like you're really not missing out on too much, but there is one thing in here that I think is actually a huge game changer. That is a huge benefit to being a global player. And that of course is the daily capsule. Now the 15 day one is okay, not a bad deal, but this 30 day one, this 30 day one is insane. All right, you're getting 95 stones, of course, over the course of 30 days, one month, but 95 stones, for I believe $10. Now for me, it's a little bit different because I live in Canada, so it's actually $13.99, a little bit more expensive, but still an insane deal. I think for my US players, my US viewers, it's somewhere around $10, which if you compare it to an actual, actual like 91 stone pack is a fraction of the cost, right? It's like maybe a quarter. Once again, I'm not 100% sure what the US prices are, but it's much, much, much cheaper. And I know there's a lot of Japanese players out there, especially, you know, Japanese whales that wish this was a thing because it's just such an insane deal that like anybody who is willing to spend money on this game should definitely get, right? So there's that. Number one, uh, Daily Capsule slash Pilaf Trove, global exclusive and probably exclusive forever. I mean, we can't say for sure, but most likely, right? That's number one. Number two, we have another huge thing that JP players are very jealous of, right? That would be these tickets. All right, Dokkan Festival tickets. They come in different forms. We have Dokkan Fest A tickets, Dokkan Fest B. Sometimes it's super Dokkan Fest and extreme Dokkan Fest. Sometimes it's premium A, premium. I should actually, I think these are different. These are the Pilaf's Trove ones. But either way, there's a lot of tickets that are on global that JP doesn't get. Now some of these are paid for, so it's like, you know, once again, not missing out on too much, but for these Dokkan Fest, like regular Dokkan Fest tickets that we get for free for summoning on to Dokkan Fest banners, JP players wish they had this, man, because these are a ton of free summons that you just get for doing summons on some of the most hyped banners in the game, right? Like, it's gonna become super relevant in about three weeks, actually less than three weeks, about two and a half weeks from now on Global when we get the Dual Dokkan Fest for the LR Gogeta and LR Vegito. And we will be getting these tickets again. And you're basically getting like a free multi with every four multis you do. So 
I mean, if you're gonna say one thing, like one benefit to being a global player, the tickets have gotta be the first thing you mentioned, man, because they're just a huge game changer. And as much as people you know, complain about JP maybe getting more things or global getting a shaft, which is definitely a different topic for a separate video, this makes up for a lot of stuff, man. It really, really does. So number two, global exclusive tickets, okay? Now moving on, next up we have the, I mean, kind of similar idea, but different, the discounts for Dokkan Fest banners. All right, we have the super multi summon discounts. Obviously they don't always look like this, but this is one example and one of the best examples for a dual Dokkan Fest. For the first three steps, a lot of times we have extra discounts on top of the three plus one and on top of the tickets. So as you can see here, first step, 25 stones for a full multi plus some tickets. And then a second step is 30 stones for a full multi plus some tickets. And then of course the third step is 50, but then the fourth one is free and we're getting tickets along the way. And uh, as I said, it comes in different forms. So sometimes it's like different de denominations. Sometimes uh, you're getting different kinds of tickets. It really depends. But for the most part, for like major dual Dokkan Fest, like anniversaries and stuff like that, we do get some extra discounts as well on top of the 3 plus 1. Now JP does get the 3 plus 1, but we get the extra discounts. And this is not actually only exclusive to dual Dokkan Fest, right? Like for some regular Dokkan Fest banners, like the Fizz Beerus one we recently got, we got 3 steps as well that were discounted, right? And also sometimes like for the Tech Hit banner, they just give us like one multi that's discounted for like 30 stones and uh, obviously not a huge difference but it does save us a couple of stones right so that is also something that JP has never ever received and that's number three okay number four is um, a specific unit and when you're looking at this you're like wait hold on JP has this JP has the physical Goku black they do but a different Fizz Goku Black. The Fizz Goku Black between JP and Global is actually quite different um, for two reasons. Number one, the passive. So if you look at, let's actually go to the JP side. So if you look at the JP version of Fizz Goku Black, you know, he has the 15% attack and defense for every key sphere, plus an extra key um, with each attack, and also received rather, and also randomly changes key spheres or a certain type, and additional attack and defense plus 5% per key sphere obtained when there's a Goku's family category enemy. So, you know, very good passive right there. Very, very solid unit, nothing wrong here. But then when you pop over to the global side, you'll notice that he has an extra part to his passive. All right, this guy gives extreme class key plus three on top of the JP passive. So when you compare the two Goku Blacks, the global one is just straight up better. Like, there's no argument here. The global version of this unit is just straight up better. And if you go over to the stats here, his max stats are also higher than the JP max stats. So 18,091 max attack at rainbow status, whereas the Japanese one, or the JP one, only has 16,458. So 1,500 around more attack. And also, of course, HP and defense are also a little bit higher as well. So we're looking at uh, 19,395 HP, 10,506 defense for JP. It's, uh, wait, is the defense the same? I think the defense might be the same, but HP is higher. Okay, so better stats and also better passive for the Fizz Goku Black. And that is number four on this list of global exclusive stuff. Number five, on this one, is probably the most infamous one and it's a bit of a joke but it's not really it's actually it's actually pretty serious all right it's actually pretty serious if you you know were a player around this time and you lived through it the to be released leader skills for super saiyan 4 gogeta and super and uh, sorry omega shenron and right now as you can see it says shadow dragon saga or fizz types and fusion category or tech types but when these guys were first released on global their leader skills were literally to be released they used to have no leader skills essentially when they first came out on uh global and the reason for that if you guys weren't around is that basically when these guys came out on global categories weren't a thing yet they have haven't 
but they hadn't implemented the category system. So they couldn't actually give these guys any kind of, you know, category leader skill because it wasn't a thing yet. I mean, I personally think they could have at least given them like some kind of mono leader skill, right? Like tech types key plus three, HP attack and defense plus 100% or something like that. I mean, there were definitely other things they could have done to, you know, not incur so much outrage from the community, but instead they decided to release them with no leader skills to be released leader skills. And I can say for a fact that this is something that JP will never get because obviously JP always gets the new stuff first, right? So any kind of new system, any kind of new, um, you know, leader skill, mechanic, whatever they release in the future, you know, global, I mean, JP will always have that. It will never be to be released unless I guess they decide to release some kind of global first mechanic. I really doubt it though. So yeah, to be released leader skills, something from global's past that is not really looked back on fondly, but definitely a global exclusive, all right? Definitely something that only global has ever had. Okay, that's number five. And uh, the last two things here, we're actually gonna pop over to the actual game to talk about. So we're gonna pop over to the menu here and go over to language and voice settings. Now this might not be like that significant to a lot of people, but to me, I think it's, it's a pretty big deal, right? And that is multiple language options, okay? So we have English, of course. We have French, Chinese, and Korean. And for JP, all they have is Japanese, right? I mean, they do have some English words here or there, but for the most part, only Japanese. I mean, there is, I think, some kind of patch you can implement, but for the actual game, like for what the developers like intended, it's supposed to be only Japanese. Whereas for global, we have four different language options, which I think is pretty awesome. And if you think about it, actually no, if you remember, <laughs> there was a point in time where we actually were able to get like a leak for the release of, uh, I think it was Tech Vegito Blue and STR Rose, because they had for some reason like included the images to their coins in the Chinese version um, of the game. Like when you when you switch over to the Chinese version, if you go into the details for the Dokkan event for Vegito Blue and Rosé, they actually included the coins, right? Or the medals to awaken the Tech Vegito Blue and STR Rosé. And back then we hadn't really gotten any news about that, right? So it was actually leaked by accident, I guess, on the Chinese version of Global. And uh, I don't know, that was just pretty funny. Like, I don't know what happened there, but you know, having these multiple language options definitely is a big difference. And finally, along the same lines as the previous point, we have English voice acting for units with active skills like this Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta, Super Saiyan 4 Goku, LR Gobros, Fizz Beerus, um, Transforming Trunks and Zamasu, so on and so forth. Kid Goku, right? Like, lots of units. I mean, Tech Broly is the one exception. I'm not gonna get into that here, but Bandai, we want Tech Broly's voice line. It's not cool. You've made us wait for this long. But anyways, different topic, getting back on point. Um, <laughs> English voice lines, guys, for units with active skills, JP only has the Japanese voice lines, whereas or global, we have the option to switch between English and Japanese voice lines, which I think is pretty awesome. Now, I'm not always gonna say that this is a, a positive because some of the English voice acting is pretty rough. All right, it's pretty rough. Like, I'm gonna say actually 90% of the time, the Japanese voice lines are better. I do prefer them. I do have my game set to Japanese voice lines, just like how I watch my anime. You know, I only, generally speaking, only watch sub versus dub, but that's a personal preference, of course. And uh, it's always good to have the option, right? Like, it doesn't matter if you prefer the Japanese voice lines. It's the principle of the fact that you have the option to listen to the English voice lines if you want to. So definitely advantage the global right there in my opinion. Once again, not a 
global versus JP video, more so just a celebrating global video. Anyways, uh, those are the seven truly global exclusive things that me and my friends came up with today. Um, once again, let us know in the comments down below if you think we missed something, if you have any other ideas for other things, and if I get enough suggestions in the comments, then maybe I'll make a second video just like this. But uh, honestly, the reason I came up with this video today is simply because global is kind of dead right now, it's kind of boring, and I thought it'd be fun to talk about this. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, if you liked the video, then make sure to like the damn video. And if it's your first time watching me, first time to the channel, and you like what you see, then definitely hit that big red subscribe button to join this Higer Squad now. And while you're at it, hit that notification bell too, so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content. And that's it. I'm out of here. Until next time, hope you guys have a fantastic, fantastic day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media. Signing out.